Hello everyone, welcome back to Dentistry Super Easy. So today we are going to learn about the dental ceramics. The very basics of dental ceramics, just a beginning of dental ceramic and what ceramics literally means. We know that over a period of time, most of the treatment options have improved and it is improving. So when we think about a crown, initially metal crowns were into our mind. But later, since our aesthetic demand was very high, we changed or modified it into metal ceramic and further it was modified into all ceramic crowns for better aesthetic looks without compromising on the strength. That was the major agenda of every time improving the materials, dental materials. So dental ceramic or ceramics according to GPT-9 ceramics means these are compounds of one or more metals with a non-metallic element which is usually oxygen. They are formed of chemical and biochemically stable substances that are strong, hard, brittle and inert non-conductors of thermal and electrical energy. This is the GPT-9 definition of ceramics. Now one of the important thing in ceramic is the composition of ceramics. Seeing this is too complicated to learn as such, let us make it more simpler by breaking it up. The basic composition of ceramic is this silica. So silica, it comes in two forms. It has the crystalline form and it is of the non-crystalline form. Now crystalline form is mainly seen in the investment materials, dental cement composites, dent sorry, dental cements, composites like that. And the non-crystalline is basically used for the dental ceramics. So our interest or point of interest is onto the non-crystalline phase of silica. The non-crystalline phase or form of silica is called as the fused silica. So this fused silica is having a very high strength. This high strength of fused silica is due to the silica tetrahydrate structure in which silica is bound to the ions, four, four ions. Now this high strength is not due to the presence of ions but it is due to the bond that they share or the bond that they have between the silica and these ions. Despite of the high strength of fused silica, it is not used in dentistry. Why? Why because in dentistry, we uh, why it is not used in dentistry because even though it is having high strength, it is having a high fusion temperature. One of the reason why it is because we are not able to attain this high fusion temperature at the laboratory setup. Even if we are able to achieve this high temperature, the other challenge is that the melting temperature of metal is far lower when compared to the metal melting temperature of the fused ceramic in its original state. So when we are trying to make a metal ceramic, uh, when we make a metal coping, on top of it when we require a ceramic outer covering, we need to melt the ceramic, isn't it? So while we are melting, what happens eventually, the metal also will melt away. If we are using fused ceramic in its original state or in its pure form. So what we have to do, we have to add certain compounds and uh, what we can do is to bring down this fusion temperature. If we are able to bring down the fusion temperature, we can a far little, we can success go on with it. So in order to decrease the fusion temperature, we add the glass modifiers. Glass modifiers are nothing but these are the carbonates of sodium, potassium and calcium. So the researchers have found that the high fusion temperature is because of the strong bond that silica shares with its ions. So if we are able to uh, bring this 
hard a uh, strong bonds into a flexible bond then we can reduce the fusion temperature not only that this flexible bond can also reduce the viscosity of the material making the material more flowable so when we reduce the strength of the bond one we get the reduced fusion temperature and the next we make the material more flowable now based on the glass modifiers and fusion temperature we can classify the ceramics or the porcelains into high fusing porcelain medium fusing porcelain low fusing and ultra low fusing now these temperatures are very important and not only really that when we select uh, the material this material of choice that we select right that is also very important in these case like ultra low fusing it is used for only single unit processes now it cannot be used for multiple unit why because these ultra low fusing they are not having that much of strength to withstand the opposing uh, biting forces if we are using it as a multiple unit so low fusing which has a fusion temperature in the range of 850 to 1100 will be utilized for the multiple unit fpds whereas ultra low fusing can be used if we are having a single unit fpds next uh, we have added to silica that is we have few to the few silica we have added the glass modifiers similarly one other compound is the feldspar feldspar is nothing but it is potassium aluminum silicate now on add addition of this feldspar two basic properties have been occurring that is the sintering it helps in sintering it uh, sinters as well as in contouring melt we'll see both in detail now when we add feldspar it will create a glass phase and in this glass phase the silica particles can flow and fuse together and that is called as the sintering process now what is meant by incongruent melting normally when a material undergoes incongruent melting material undergoes melting it has a liquid phase as well as a crystalline phase now the liquid phase is nothing but the glass phase and this glass phase will again help in the sintering process the crystalline phase is nothing but the leucite now the leucite it is having a high coefficient of thermal expansion and not only really that it is also more aesthetic it provides more aesthetics to the material as such now we will deal that in detail in the coming sessions commonly we hear about the word sintering what exactly sintering is it's not that complicated as it seems it's very simple now to make to get an understanding about what sintering is imagine a beaker in which there are silica particles okay now this silica particles in this beaker they do not take the shape of the that they, it means it is free to flow or it is free to move about okay but when we heat this particles at a very high temperature and then cool it to the room temperature and now when we try to take these particles out of the container we can say that the particles have attained the shape of the container now why is it so why because at higher temperature and then cooling down to a room temperature these particles now the magnified version is of these particles you can see there is a incomplete fusion that is the meti the particles melted and incompletely fused okay only a little point fusion has only a point at the single point they have melted together and fused together like that the entire particles fuses together to form a more rigid substance or more rigid material that is what is called as sintering and that is the process that takes place during sintering now other than the uh, feldspar glass modifiers we also have the boric oxide which acts as a glass modifier and also it creates a glass phase next comes the pigments now pigments are required for giving stains or giving colors to the our restoration so the uh, which are available are nickel oxide which is imparts brown color copper oxide green color titanium oxide yellow color manganese oxide lavender color cobalt oxide blue color 
Now on addition of the silica, glass modifiers, boric oxide, pigments and feldspar, we were able to create a feldspathic ceramic. Now this feldspathic ceramic, it is very aesthetic and very aesthetic to use. So now the researchers when they were using it as a crown, as a feldspathic ceramic crowns, they found that it was not too much of success. It didn't go for a very great success rate. It had failures, that is it had fractures. Now they came to know that it was having, feldspathic ceramic was having a very high compressive strength, but it had very low tensile strength. Now there are certain small cracks which are present on the ceramic surface. Now when we are having a biting force or when we are applying a tensile force or a bending force over the surface of ceramic, what happens is this crack which is already present will propagate and eventually it will lead to a fracture. The reason for that is the low tensile strength. So for that what they have done was placing a metal beneath the ceramic restoration that is metal placed inside the crown. So when metal is inside the crown and having a ceramic covering over the metal aesthetically that is in the visible surface it was very aesthetic. And not only that since metal is more stronger it was able to prevent the bending of the crown and thereby propagation of the crack was reduced. But it too had disadvantages like the metal, a thick layer of metal was required over the prepared tooth surface and over to on top of the metal we required a 2 mm of ceramic which, which led to more amount of tooth reduction. You know that as the tooth structure is reduced, the tooth strength will decrease. Again, it can lead to a fracture of the tooth eventually. Okay, not only really that, metal as such is an opaque subject or an opaque object. So what happens when the light pass, it does not allow the light to pass through. That is, it lacks translucency. As a result, the tooth which were being given metal ceramic crowns, it had an opaque appearance or artificial look, which is not very uh, appreciable when case or in the anterior sections, right? Aesthetic zone, that is from canine to canine. We cannot place metal crowns. So how to make a strong metal free crown. Researchers have been researching a lot and they have come up with certain steps like to reduce the crack, certain methodologies okay, or to introduce the residual compressive stress, to interrupt the crack propagation and also to modify the design. These we will be seeing in the next session. So in this session we have seen what are the composition of the feldspathic ceramic and what led to the modifications of the ceramic and these will be seen in the next session thank you all for your patient listening